The city of Indore in Madhya Pradesh is ranked as India's cleanest cities. But just as the year turned to 2026, there was huge shock. Over 400 to 500 people were rushed to hospital just because they drank water. It is now reported that at least 10 people have died and the numbers could go up. The condemnation of this tragedy is loud and justified. But the fact is that this is not about Indore, nor is it about water supply. It is about sewage, the excreta we flush and forget every day. The problem is we do not join the dots. I am Sunita Narayan and this is my show. I discuss with you every fortnight, not just the crisis, but also most importantly, the why and what we need to do. This time, I want to take forward the lesson of Indore to fix the problem, to find the answer. Let's be very clear about this. This is not about Indore alone. In fact, since the news has broken about this water tragedy, there have been reports from other cities where water supply is contaminated. It is full of sewage. It is taking lives. From Gandhinagar in Gujarat to Jhajjar in Haryana to across the country. And let's be clear, this will not be fixed unless we understand the following. Every city administration, successive governments focus on water supply, but ignore the fact that for every liter of water that is supplied, 80% returns as wastewater. In our current system, this return of flow or sewage is so expensive to intercept or treat that it is largely ignored until it resurfaces, mixed up in our drinking water, or we find polluting our lakes and rivers. So unless we start obsessing about wastewater, clean water security will remain elusive. This is the lesson from Indore. The Indian government has a huge program to fund city projects. And this actually recognizes this imperative. But if you look at the data, you will find that not enough is happening to change the design of water and sewage projects. The Atal Mission for Rejuvenation and Urban Transformation, or Amrut as it is called, finances water supply, sewage and green infrastructure across cities of India. According to the Union Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs, which manages this project, roughly 1.9 lakh crore has been spent on some 3,500 projects over the past decade. But if you look deep, you find that water supply tops the priority with over 60% of the spend compared to just about 34% on sewage. If you look further, you find that rejuvenating water bodies, which would allow groundwater recharge and augment water supply, has only taken up a minuscule 3% of the total spending in this project. This is what needs to change. But let's also be clear it is not about spending more on sewage, but redesigning the infrastructure so that it is more affordable. It is only then that cities will have the resources to ensure that every drop of wastewater is intercepted, it is treated, and it is reused. Today's water supply model relies on pipes and pumps that transports water from long distances as local sources either dry up or get polluted. Indore, for instance, has lakes. It even has two rivers crisscrossing it. And in the past, the Yashwan Sagar Dam, which is located at close to the city, supplied its drinking water. But then the city grew, but worse, 
It neglected its local sources and believed that the only answer was to source water from Narmada, which is 70 kilometers away, not just at a distance, but it also requires the water to be pumped up. And now this water supply comes to the city, but at considerable cost. And we know that the longer the pipeline, the more expensive it is to build. Also, the longer the pipeline, the more it leaks and the more it consumes electricity for pumping. This adds to the price of water supplied. And this reaches a point where even the rich cannot afford the capital and the operational costs of basic water. And there is never enough any money to subsidize all. This you see in Indore and even in the Narmada connected Indore. The bulk of the households rely on groundwater for drinking. The 2019 report of the Controller and Auditor General, CAG, had pointed out all these facts. It pointed out that water supply was not meeting the needs of the bulk of the households. Their distribution losses ranged from 30 to 70 percent and there was widespread contamination. This is the real story of water supply in our cities. Worse, we know that when sewage is not properly intercepted, this becomes a public health disaster waiting to happen. Today, sewage plans revolve around more pipes and more pumps that never get completed. In each case, households need to be connected to this underground sewage. Sewage drains net need to be retrofitted. And remember, many of our cities are already built. And this is why you're constantly seeing that roads need to be dug up and that this is a project which goes on endlessly. This wastewater is then pumped through underground networks to treatment plants and discharged into drains, rivers or lakes. But these rivers and lakes are already choked with untreated sewage of the majority who remain unconnected. Which is why, and I keep repeating this, this effort is largely wasted. The cost is mind-boggling and these projects face delay and cost overrun. By the time one sewage network is completed, another part of the city has imploded and needs to be connected. The cost of this system is so expensive that the fact is much of India remains unsewered. And most households today depend on toilets connected to on-site systems. When I say on-site, it could be a septic tank or it just could be a tank, a holding tank. In Indore, we found leakage from one such on-site toilet system contaminated drinking water. Indore's two rivers, Khan and Saraswati, remain polluted. And this clearly tells us that drains are discharging untreated sewage into these rivers. So let's accept this reality and let's build on it to find solutions for sewage management that are inclusive and affordable and this is what will make it sustainable. In fact, and that is part of the solution I want to talk about, these on-site systems should not be seen as the problem. They are the solution for the future, but they will work only if it is ensured that the septic tanks are desludged, that the excreta is taken for treatment using tankers, and that the treated water and the solid is reused as manure or fuel. Without this, the water supply, what we drink, the water will always be at risk of contamination. So the bottom line is sewage management first, then water supply.
So what then is the way ahead? Let me tell you the way that I believe government policy and practice must move. The Amrut guidelines should be revised. First, the guidelines must be redesigned to prioritize sewage management, including total interception of excreta from households. To make it affordable, cities should be incentivized to use the existing network of on-site septic tanks. The plan should be that tankers, not underground pipes, takes septage for treatment. This is faster, cheaper and so more inclusive. Second, Amrut guidelines must incentivize reuse. Cities should in fact be paid so that they send treated wastewater for reuse and the sludge for bioenrichment of fuel. The water supply and sewage infrastructure should be redesigned, not for sewage interception or for building standalone sewage treatment plants, but for wastewater reuse. Financing should be linked to the volume of wastewater and sludge that is reused and recycled. But third, water supply must also become more affordable. This means that water supply must be connected to local sources, including the rejuvenation of water bodies. If we invest in lakes and ponds, it will reduce the cost of long distance transfer. It will make groundwater more sustainable and water supply more affordable. But this is only possible with the sewage first approach. As long as water bodies continue to be polluted, cities will continue their search for cleaner water from increasingly distant places. In this way, the cycle of clean water to deadly water will persist. This really is the learning from the Indore tragedy. The fact that in this cleanest city of India, hundreds were rushed to hospital because of drinking dirty water. It is in your story today and your city's story tomorrow. We have to change the way we manage sewage because if we do not do so, our water will always remain contaminated. We will always remain at risk. This is really what we need to fix. I hope that this cry from Indore will shake us to make us do things differently. And I hope also that you will continue to watch me as I bring you not just the crisis, but the solution. I want to talk about what we must do because in our world today, the answer is not difficult. We need to stand behind the solution. We need to work on it and we need to make sure that our future is secure. So please watch me. Please send me your comments. I read everything that you write. It means a lot. It gives me the courage to go on. Thank you.